I'm going to call the uh, East Greenbush Central School District Board of Education meeting to order. I have 704, if anyone's keeping track. Uh, attendance tonight, we have board members present. Uh, Ms. Kennedy, Mr. Mann, Mr. Dunn, Ms. O'Brien, Ms. Curtin, and Ms. Steinbeck. And Ms. Taylor won't be here. I'm not sure about Ms. Lamersky if she's able to make it this evening. But we do have a quorum. So with that, if you could please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, everyone. So I believe we have our Columbia High School student council reps here, Emma and Rowan. Welcome. Good evening, everyone. As a reminder, Spirit Week will begin this Friday and run through next Friday. During the school day on Friday, October 7th, pep rally will be held outside on the turf. This year's pep rally will consist of games such as musical chairs, a blindfolded pillow fight, limbo, male cheerleading, and powder puff. Following pep rally, the homecoming dance will be held Saturday night, October 8th in the gymnasium. As homecoming preparations are underway, well, our, our most recent meetings have consisted of making pep rally signs and decorations for the dance. This year's theme is Alice in Wonderland, so the hallways of Columbia will be decorated with giant mushrooms, playing cards, and greenery. The student body is really looking forward to one of the events they love most every year. And that's all we have today. All right. Thank you. You're welcome to stay. You <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on to the agenda, we have the draft minutes for the September 14th meeting. Uh, my notes, Kathleen and Mark were not here, so we, that still gives us enough to vote on the, the minutes. So any revisions or comments on the on the minutes for September 14th? Seeing none, I need a motion to approve that. Jennifer, I need a second. Gerald, yeah. all those in favor? All those abstaining? We're good. Very good. Okay. <laughs> that, that's approved. The next one is the draft minutes for the meeting on September 20th. Um, <clears throat> Kathleen and Emily were not here, so it still gives us enough folks. So we need a motion to approve the minutes from September 20th. John, second. Mark, all those in favor? Approved. All those abstaining? Emily and Kathleen. Very good. We will now move to the board forum. I'll start on my right with Emily. Emily? No. Okay. Kathleen? No. Good. Uh, Jennifer? No. John? Mark? Charlotte? Oh, good. And I'm good as well. So we'll move to the public forum. Residents, students, employees, and business representatives of the East Greenwood Central School District may address the board on matters concerning programs and or operations of the district other than matters involving personnel. Members of the board do not directly respond to citizen concerns in the public forum. If a response is appropriate, either the president or superintendent will contact the individual in the near future. Those persons who wish to address the board will be recognized by the chair of the meeting and should state for the record their name and address or affiliation with the district or business. While the board does not wish to infringe upon free speech protections, it must be stressed that the visitor's forum is not deemed to be an open forum. The board president will conduct the forum for an orderly and efficient operation of board business. In addition, any remarks, if considered defamatory or stigmatizing or prohibited, would heal will be declared out of order. Any, all comments shall be limited to five minutes. Is there anyone who'd like to address the board at this time? No one? All right. So with that, we'll move to the reports and presentation of the superintendent. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Buno. Uh, our first presentation is a special recognition from the New York State School Boards Association. Uh, for those members of the public who are watching the meeting via live stream and those members of our community that are here, uh, school board service, involves much more than simply showing up two nights a month for uh, the board's regular meeting. There are a lot of uh, leadership opportunities and uh, participation on the part of board members. One of the areas of participation is receiving professional development and leadership development training from the New York State School Boards Association. And last week we received a letter in the mail from the New York State School Boards Association and a nice plaque recognizing John Dunn for achieving leadership <laughs> development opportunities totaling 500 points. Not necessary. Congratulations, John. Thank you for your service. 
So it will frame. Right? So it will frame. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, folks. We also received a certificate for Frankie Boa, our former board member, who has accumulated 75 points of leadership development. So I want to thank Frank as well uh, for his service on the board. Appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you, John, once again, for your dedication and service to the school district and the community. Appreciate it. It's my privilege. Okay. I'm going to turn the second item over to Mr. Stiles, our Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum Instruction, to introduce a program review. Sure. Um, tonight we have Mr. Scott Halliday, our music department chair. He's going to be doing a presentation of a summary from the um, music program review that was conducted last year and endorsed by the CCS committee. Yes, sir. Great. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm here to uh, speak to our uh, 2022 program review. Um, the program review uh, was an opportunity for us to highlight many of the good things that are going on in our department and also to set new goals and to um, perhaps look at some things that we could improve on as we move forward. Um, first of all, our committee membership included everyone in our department. Everyone in the department had, had a hand in this program review. I know um, some departments will, will create subgroups um, and of you know three or four folks. Um, I wanted to really get the expertise from everybody um, because as you'll see in this next slide, um, I broke up our department into uh, the categories that you see up on the screen. Um, so we have many folks that cover and work in multiple categories, but um, we, we looked in our program review, you'll see that we're gonna look at the band, grades five through 12, the orchestra program, grades five through 12, the choral program, grade four through 12, our elementary general music program, grades K through five, and our secondary general music grades six through 12. Um, and although we have five categories, uh, several teachers do teach across more than one of these categories um, you know, throughout their week. Um, something to highlight is our music mission statement. Uh, we are not here to turn out professional musicians or music educators. Our goal is to give that lifelong enjoyment to our students that are in our program. Um, if they so choose to go into music as a profession, that's great, and we will certainly assist them on that, but that is not the primary goal of our, our department here. Um, we are a department that affirms that music education provides students with unique and valuable experiences of creating, performing, responding, and connecting. Music is a discipline with articulate and sequential content that complements other areas of the school curriculum. Music education places intellectual demands on students that develop problem-solving techniques and critical thinking skills. Proficiency in music as mandated by the New York State and national standards is essential in promoting maximum growth in every student. Um, our accomplishments. Again, each one of these slides, will you'll see me go through each of those ca uh, different categories that I had alluded to a few, few moments ago. So um, in our band 12, 5 through 12, um, we, can, we continue to have uh, great representation in our all-state area, all-state, um, suburban council, all-county festivals each year. Um, we implemented uh, several years ago a district-wide evening band festival. We felt that the, the, the community was really responsive to that, um, and we're going to continue doing that on alternating years. Um, in our orchestra program, enrollment, this is something to really note here, the enrollment has surpassed the goal. They set a goal at our last program review of reaching 250 students in their program, and they surpassed that. Um, this program has really taken off in spite of the, you know, the, the downside that we've had with COVID over the last couple of years. Um, the orchestra program also has uh, representation in our area all state servant council and all county festivals each year. Um, in our choral, our 412 choral program, they've updated, rewritten, and implemented a, uh, the 412 curriculum. Um, Goff students, the middle school choral program, we see a lot of, again, participation in our suburban council middle school. Um, it's something that, you know, we have a very large population of our students that are in those uh, select um, ensembles. Uh, the Columbia Choral students represented East Greenbush and multiple regional festivals, similar to our band and our orchestra through Allstate uh, Conference Choir, and last year we had some uh, in All Eastern as well. Um, you can see that the, the next bullet points incre increased communication between the elementary choral staff. You know, when you look at things 412, that's that's something that's really big. Um, and again, with our bell top choir, uh, you, we have a bell top boy choir and bell top girl choir. Those are things that we uh, feel are really uh, important. Um, our elementary general program increased communication again between the, the staff. 
um, updated and Im implemented the K-5 curriculum, and they've uh, input the Edwin Gordon using music learning theory into that program, and all teachers collaborate on a regular basis, even outside of our uh, regular department meetings. They're getting together, they're sharing ideas, they're working on, you know, hey, are you still doing this? Is this, you know, so it's a, it's a great collaborative group of, of teachers there. Um, at the secondary level, this is uh, something that's been Something that we want to do for a long time, but with our new um, general music teacher, Jared Grieco, he's done a great job in updating the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade curriculum, really making it relevant to the students. Um, there's the ukulele program, uh, world drumming, bucket drumming, and the great digital music production skills that these students are learning that they can, you know, they can continue with that. Um, and it's definitely, it, re it has really revitalized the middle school general music program um, in these last uh, four or five years. Uh, increased enrollment in the general music program, um, you know, that's something we've had to add sections because he's done such a great job. Students are, are invested in that and, the, the you know, the, the students are, are continuing to take that course. Um, it's, we continue the guitar and ukulele club. Um, in, increased utilization of student-operated technology in the middle school general music program. Uh, we didn't have that before. And with Jared uh, revitalizing that program, we, we see a lot of that, the, the newer materials coming into the classroom. Um, there's a new guitar elective that uh, we started at the high school about four years ago. Uh, we didn't have for a while any kind of general music program. We only had, you know, you had to be already be in the music program if you wanted to be part of the high school program. So we created a course that would be uh, for anybody. Um, so we had students who were not engaged in the program at all um, and started with the guitar curriculum. And like I said, I think this is our fourth year doing that. Um, and then we did have music theory before, but uh, Mrs. Badger has worked with uh, SUNY Schenectady, and we now have a college-level music theory curriculum at the high school, and this is the third year going on in that. Um, some goals, things that we're looking to do uh, in the band. We want to increase our district-wide enrollment, um, and we're fo focusing on the transitional years. Um, so, um, in that middle school where students are trying to find different things and find their way, we're really working to, you know, foster something that's not scary when they go and leave their home school um, from elementary to the middle school. Uh, so we've, we've been outlining some things that we can do for that. Um, we did that this, this last week at our, uh, we had a department meeting time on our PD day. Um, we uh, put a proposal to consolidate the multiple part-time FTEs at the middle school into one position. Um, with our orchestra program, we increased the FTE orchestra programs. We're looking to do that. We've talked, I've spoken to, well, last year I spoke to Mr. McHugh, I spoke to the elementary principals, and that is something that is in the works um, to increase the amount of string teaching time at the elementary level. Uh, since the numbers are going up and matching the numbers in some of the buildings that the band has, um, the, those string teachers have about half of the time, or in some cases, a third of the time that the band folks have to um, get through their curriculum with their students. Um, the orchestra program would like to update the curriculum um, and obtain an increased teaching space at Goff and Green Meadow. We're right now, again, we're busting at the seams. Um, and I said to Mr. Uh, Mr. McHugh at the time, I said, you know, I don't, I don't know who to ask for this. And he says, well, put it in your program review. That way the board knows what your needs are. Superintendent knows what your needs are. So uh, here, here we go, all right? Uh, the choral program, uh, rebuilding age appropriate skills in the choral setting. Uh, COVID has been tough, but we're, we're, I think we've been able to get back on our feet and we're starting to make that forward progress again. Um, we use the NISMA, New York State School of Music Association, for kind of our gauge for difficulty. Um, so those, uh, you know, bullet points to NISMA, that's what we're looking to do. So they're level one for seventh grade and as you go through the more advanced groups, getting to that top level five and six. Um, also updating the choral curriculum uh, in the library. Uh, for, for selections, you know, it's tough when you do a Pops concert every year and, you know, pop music changes every, every three years. So keeping that, that fresh uh, for, for that program. Um, in our uh, elementary K-5, General Music will implement a ukulele program. We're going to work on that with our district-wide music budget to get um, those instruments into each of the elementary schools. Um, and, and they have enjoyed using the music play, which is a supplement uh, to their general music uh, classroom uh, instruction. Secondary 612, um, again, we're looking at storage issues. It's tight over at the middle school. You know, there's a lot of students involved in the program, which is awesome. Um, but when that new music wing was built about 20 some years ago, we didn't have the amount of students in the program that we do now, and they're busting at the seams. The, the orchestra program is, is, I think it's 10 times, um, you know, what was at Goff when I was teaching there 
Um, and I left golf to go to the high school in 2001. So in that 22-year 20, period, 21-year period, the program has really taken off, and we, we need that uh, storage and, and bit, really rehearsal space to be to, uh, addressed and looked at. Um, continue to update the general music curriculum. That's one of those things that, um, as I said, Mr. Greek has done a nice job, but because there is digital workstations involved, there's new things that are always coming around, and he's trying to keep that fresh, um, and you know, we're, we're working on that. Um, as you can see in some of the next few bullet points, um, allowing for students to be in composition um, in their digital audio workstation. That's what DAW is uh, standing for there. Um, we will continue to purchase new guitars through our music budget at the high school, again, just so that we have a good supply. And uh, I've been maintaining those, so maybe that even wouldn't have to be done every single year. Um, continue teaching music theory. We want to keep offering that three, three college credit uh, SUNY Schenectady. Um, and then in order for students to, to uh, get a music sequence at the high school, they need to have that offering. And it's sometimes tough because we have a tight eight period day. Um, so oftentimes the enrollment in that class is lower than what you would see in a math class. Um, but that's one thing that we've been able to keep, keep rolling. Um, our strengths here, again, participation in our local um, select groups, suburban council, all county, area, all state. Um, we've in, since the last program review, increased our technology in all of our music classrooms um, with similar stuff that we're looking at here tonight. Uh, the orchestra program, solid retention, as I've, I've mentioned already. Good communication within the department. Um, the repertoire in the library is always, you know, being freshened. Um, the community has seen the chamber orchestra out and about on a lot of, in, in, during a lot of events. Um, the, as I said, the growth in enrollment has been huge over the last uh, more than just five years, but in, since we're talking about these five years here. Um, and again, we have that, that uh, participation in Conference All-State, which is the one out in Rochester, Area All-State, All-Eastern, Suburban Council, and All-County Music Festivals. The choral program, again, collegiality. I think that's big. I think we sometimes overlook that, but if you don't like the people that you work with, you're not going to make a good product. And in our, in, right across the whole music department, um, we get along extremely well. Um, we enjoy working with one another. There's a lot of creative minds in there, um, and you know we're able to get a lot done. Um, high level of student investment, that's, that's important. Our choral exposure, again, similar to the chamber orchestra, the chamber singers get out and about, community events and things of that nature. Again, participation in Conference All-State, Area All-State, All-Eastern, Suburban Council, and All-County Music Festivals. Our K-5 program, uh, strengths again, consistent collaboration, there it is, between the music staff. Routine use of technology, and that's something that's really increased in the last five, since the last five year program review. Um, routine use of the technology to collaborate, um, you know, obviously to share with students and, and teach them and, and show them new things, but also with their collaboration um, in their uh, working with their lesson plans. At the 612 level, uh, again, developing relevant curriculum, something that a middle schooler would be interested in, right? Um, there's nothing wrong with Bach and Beethoven, but you don't want to read a book about Bach and Beethoven when you're in seventh grade, okay? Um, so Jared has really revitalized that program, getting the kids hands-on um, and making that a really relevant course. Um, again, the gu guitar course and the curriculum in high school has been new this five years, and our college level theory. Uh, areas of weakness and recommendation, this is when everyone gets mad, but um, there's some things that we'd like to do. Um, and as you're reading the slides, uh, for, every recommend, or for every what we would call a weakness, um, underneath in italicized writing is a recommendation, right? Um, again, my instruction in doing, this is my third program review, don't just whine, don't complain, but perhaps offer a solution. Um, in some cases, a solution may not be anything that I have any ability to do, but I'm presenting it to the administration to adjust staffing, minimize current. Right? So I'm, I'm making everyone aware that this is something that could be done. Um, it's to a certain degree out of my hands, but this is something that if we had an opportunity to change anything, these are the, the points that we're, we're bringing up here. So the current structure of FTE allocation uh, with multiple teachers at the middle school was something that we were looking at. Um, the A period day, I know that's been something that's been, you know, there's nothing we can really do about it, but that does have an impact on our program simply because we have so many singleton courses at the high school. Um, if you have, you know, eight different courses and, you know, a kid wants to take those eight and they, they may not align periods one through eight. Sometimes we get those um, overlaps. Um, we see it a lot. We have a lot of, you know, um, I call them high powered students. They're really smart kids. They're taking really high level stuff. And some of their electives, they, they simply can't take it because of the tightness of the schedule. 
Um, many years ago, many of you know, I know because I had your kids, we had a nine period day and we had more of that wiggle room, all right? I get it, it's an expense issue, but you know, having that there is something that would allow many of the other electives outside of music to, to, to run a little bit more smoothly. Um, in our orchestra program, we talked about the uh, FTE allocation at the elementary school, and we did make a recommendation. We are working on that already, so that's something that's actually moving forward. Um, the, the written curriculum that is currently in our hands over there was written in two, 2005, so they're going to either submit us a, a request for summer curriculum or through our PD days have some time to maybe just kind of tweak some of the things on, on that document. Um, again, I, I alluded to the uh, teaching space and instrument storage space at the middle school in particular. Um, Again, I can't just go over and make the walls bigger and make the room bigger and add on space. So, you know, make administration and Board of Education aware that this is a need. Um, and when an opportunity arises that we can look at changing those spaces, have that in the back of your mind. Um, for the Coral 412, uh, again, st instructional space for chorus at the elementary schools. That's always tough. Um, so, again, making, making the folks here aware of, of that. Um, updating the core library to indicate a wide selection of pops that I had mentioned to before. Um, we've been able to, at the middle school and high school level, tap into some textbook funds because that is our text. So that has helped. Um, we're looking to perhaps be able to do that more at the elementary level. Um, again, performance and instructional space at the middle school building. Um, you know, we're looking at, you know, what, what can we do? Can, can, how, how can we, you know, get some elbow room over there? So those are points that we wanted to make happen in there. Uh, at our general K, our K5, again, storage space, organizational equipment. Again, it's tough. So we, we need to look at that um, moving forward here. Um, again, you see a theme, lack of space, lack of space. It's really tight. It's really tight, over, especially over at the middle school. Um, go over there, um, you know, during our ensemble time, you can see everybody's packed in there. Um, and then uh, more students would enroll in music theory at the high school if the schedule would accommodate. So let's go back to that scheduling idea again for that secondary general. Um, simply, it's tough to fit it in with, with what we have with our eight period day. Data points. I'm not going to read all these because there's a lot there. But what I want to highlight on this data point is if you take the GPA average at the high school of all of the students who are not involved in our performing groups, and you put that up against the ones who are, it's typically, and this happened the last time, it happened across the River Council, our music students are typically scoring about five points on average higher for their GPAs. So um, a lot of that is, you know, they're, they're learning how to manage their time, they're learning how to budget their time, they're working collaboratively with their students when they're performing. Um, so that's a reflection on there. And then my last takeaways, and I don't know if I'm over my 10 minutes or not, but over the past 10 years, I want you guys to hit, I'm gonna hit you with these last, uh, on my way out the door. Over the last 10 years, the orchestra program has more than doubled in size. That's something big. The teaching and storage space at Goth Middle School is inadequate to support our current program needs. And then I'm gonna leave you with a positive one here. Music staff continues to adjust the curriculum to meet the ever-changing needs of our student population. And this has been very necessary since the beginning of COVID. Um, we can't just plunk down the same kind of information in front of a student and expect them to spit back to us the same information. So we've had to tweak and massage everything that we have done that was normal to us before that, it's become different. Now I do see things coming back and I do see things being able to return to, you know, what I would call normal. Um, so that is definitely a positive that I'm gonna leave you guys with tonight. Does anybody have any questions? No, very comprehensive. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. So one thing we are looking at in the bracket is long term yeah. planning and things like that, and space needs, and of course, you know, all those things come come under consideration based on what the district needs, and we'll uh, look at those as part of the recommendation. Yeah. All right, turning to the next item is our discussion. Um, the purchasing, purchasing associate job description, which I understand is really a um, retitling and looking at different groups. So, who's going to cover that? Linda. Linda. Okay. So, um, Linda, myself, and Mary Ridzi took a look at the um, job title um, in the business office, account clerk typist. Um, that position has been vacant for a year. Most recently, we were able to fill that role, um, but that person, after five months, resigned from that position. Um, so we met to analyze what the job description had for um, typical work activities, job duties, minimum qualifications. 
against our list of what that position actually is responsible for. Um, and the main responsibility is the um, individual holding that role um, would require um, knowledge in all aspects of the purchase requisition process. So we put together a job description that we feel encompasses all of the present day responsibilities with minimum qualifications needed to fill the role. And we would like to retitle that with civil service um, in the hopes of recruiting a qualified candidate that would meet the expectations for the position. Ed? Sure. Well, over the past year, because we have been short staffed, um, we have reached out to Questar, who has assisted us. We've had some um, substitutes come in. And uh, most recently, we took the extra classroom treasurer um, over the summer and had him come over and work with us during the year, uh, during the summer. So, so we've been filling it, filling the gaps as best we could, but it really is a need. Um, this position handles all of the requisitions throughout the district for from all of the buildings and departments. So it is a key position in the business office. Any questions or comments? I think um, doing an analysis of when there are vacancies and changes to either update skills, make uh, uh, changes, do the analysis of the work required, and also provide opportunity for staff to get into these kind of positions um, is always important. And the next challenge would be to, of course, you got to bring this forward to the civil service, right, county? Mm -hmm. And then what was it? And then and post. Like and post. Okay. You feel that there's a lot of these positions that are there. It'll draw more more candidates. Um, so. I think so. Um, we had a lot of success when we um, re-envisioned the um, principal account clerk position to reflect the um, accounts okay. payable associate. So okay. we think that this title and the present day responsibilities will um, provide the candidate pool that we need. Great. Anyone else? So move forward. Okay. okay. Thank you for your Sounds support. Good. All right. Next item is about the policy committee and Jeff. Yes, I, I'm first. thinking about some uh, areas where uh, at the central office and board level, we can kind of normalize procedures like we're doing throughout the district. And one of the things that's been challenging over the last couple of years is to create a regular schedule of policy review. You may recall a few years ago, the New York State School Boards Association would send um, updates uh, to our policies, uh, those that were required sometimes by the state that needed some revisions. So for example, the, the, the New York State Board of Regents might make a change and then there's a subsequent required policy. There's also recommended policies that the New York State School Boards Association uh, uh, provides districts and the district school boards can decide whether or not they wanna implement such a policy. And we have had somewhat of a fragmented schedule of review so in order to get us kind of back on track in more of a secular, uh, predictable way, I reached out to the New York State School Boards Association Policy Service, and I'm gonna be having a meeting with them tomorrow to better understand the flow of their policies when they come, what's behind the policy recommendation. So for example, you can go on board docs now under policies and any updates are actually sent through board docs. I'd like to have more discussion with the uh, school boards association, what's driving the policy, what's the basis of the policy, and then convene our policy committee, which is Kathleen, Mark, and Joanne, to discuss the policies and have more of a regular flow to the board. And so I just wanted you know, some feedback on that. I think we need to um, have more of a schedule of review. Kind of goes along with Mark's request for the calendar, which we are working on. Uh, we have a draft in place. We have to have a central office meeting to kind of fine tune it. But um, if there's any comments that you have on policy uh, review or anything of that nature, I, I certainly would welcome them. But I just kind of want to get on more of a scheduled basis. Any comments? John? I think this is a really good process. That's one of the things that's very easily neglected is your policies because you're caught up into the business of the, the environment and the change, especially during COVID. A lot of things were, uh, you, you were a health service administrator, <laughs> and, uh, extraordinaire. So um, I'm, I'm very supportive of this. I think it's really important. And also we have to recognize at this level that 
the social norms are changing as well at a very rapid pace due to a lot of different reasons. And I think we have the technology to monitor our policies in a much more efficient way. So I, I'm, I'm excited to hear about this. Thank you, John. Um, I think that that sounds great. And I echo what John said. Um, I think it's it's good to look at what's coming coming through and the pattern in that. Do you, does the policy committee um, review uh, old policy or longstanding policy uh, through any time frame? Is that going to be included in your? Yes, um, there's really three elements. You, you upgrade, update your policy. Mm -hmm. You can rescind your policy if it's no longer required or relevant mm -hmm. and you can adopt a new policy. So part of the cycle of policy review is to look at your current policies and either update them in terms of revising them or changing them, or you say, well, this, this policy is outdated mm -hmm. and no longer needed. And you bring a resolution to the board to abolish it. So you have a, you already have a timetable when you go and you look at policy at whatever. Time Actually, we're going to try to establish a more predictable timetable oh. by working with the school boards association. That's exactly what we're trying to do. Okay. Establish a more regular predictable cycle of policy <laughs> review. Yeah, I mean, I, I think our policy manuals, or man, only manual because, again, the paper guy, I guess, um, <laughs> is pretty comprehensive. It's very large, a lot of policies that oh, yeah. have been around for a long time. And I think there's some kind of immediate things we have to address. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing we could address to look at gender neutral uh, parts of the policies, making sure that uh, things are still relevant. Um, the NISBA service, if there's updates or recommended policies, again, that's a statewide agent, uh, organization. Mm -hmm. They may not exactly fit with uh, what our community needs are, and there may be something that we want to do that they don't recommend, but things like that, I think, right. are good to address and make sure that we're um, staying current, but also reflecting the needs of our community in particular. Thank I you. think it's really important as as we move this forward. I mean, we just demonstrated in what you're doing with the job descriptions because the job descriptions are also archaic too. So I think that this overall approach and bringing technology so that we can have a more hands-on because what happens in these, whether it's a job description, a policy, or, you know, the music review, I mean, the technology brings all this stuff right to our forefront in a much more efficient way. But the challenge is bringing all that information into the technology as well with the staffing and, and dealing with current needs. So I, I think as we move forward, uh, the fact that we're prioritizing bringing all our systems into so that they can be reviewed because I think one of the challenges that we face as a board is people have different come at different times. I mean, the people who have been here longest understand the process more or are frustrated by the process. And, um, and as we bring new people in, um, it's much better for us as an entity to be able to bring them up to speed at a more accurate and faster pace so that they can contribute um, in, an, in a more even manner. So I, I really appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay, so well, more, to, more to come on the yes. uh, schedules and things like yes. that after your meeting with school boards. Yep. Should be fun. Um, going to the regular business, approval of program for residents with disabilities. Any comments or questions on that? Seeing none, any motion approved? Kathleen, second. John, all those in favor? Approved. The Board of Ed uh, meeting schedule, revised locations. There was some requests to change the locations. The new schedule is in a hard copy in blue here. Um, any questions on that? Seeing none, any motion to approve that? Jennifer, second. Emily, all those in favor? Approved. Uh, a couple change orders on the agenda. The first one is the phase three for the Renane building contractors. Anything we want to comment about that? That is for the abatement of vermiculite that was um, <laughs> discovered at the high school in the boiler room and in a mechanical room. So we needed to abate those in order to use those rooms. Right. Any questions for Linda? Seeing none, any motion to approve that? Michelle, second. Cheryl, all those in favor? Approved. 
Next change order is the Riverview construction uh, phase two. This is a change order for, we were discovering sinkholes at Red Mill Elementary out in the yard and it was due to a broken drainage pipe underneath. And this was quite, quite an old yes. drainage system, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we had several sinkholes several as a sinkholes. result of it. It was original pipes. Original pipes. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Was so they've building? been replaced 19, what? right 16? up to the building. Yeah. yeah. Good. Okay. And these, pro these change orders are all permissible under the current project that was approved in 2017, and they're eligible still for building aid reimbursement. Okay. So. All right. Need a motion to approve that change order? Kathleen, second. John, all those in favor? Approved. We have two uh, tenure items. First one is a resolution for uh, tenure. And I will just open that up quick uh, for Jillian Castaneda. Am I saying that right? Jillian Campos Castaneda. Very good. In the tenure area of science. Science. Any questions on that? Seeing none, any motion to approve? Jillian's tenure. Jennifer, second. Michelle, all those in favor? Approved. And next we have. Recommendation for tenure for teaching assistants. Bring those up. We have Lisa Del Pazzo, Mark Oliver, and Catherine Zapier. Am I saying those right? You are. Thank you. Any questions on those? Need a motion to approve those? Kathleen, second. Mark, all those in favor? Approved. Thank you. Congratulations to the staff that re received tenure. And the next item is the MOA with the CSCA regarding some transportation. Uh, yes, the CSCA represents uh, our transportation employees. And as the board is aware in the community that we have been in transition, uh, we have our new supervisor now, Dr. Wanda McQueen, uh, who came on board actually the first day of school. That's how we oriented her. Uh, and um, <laughs> buses were already running. A lot of work was done over the summer uh, by Carrie Ann Rudolph and Jeff Smith, our uh, senior bus drivers. Uh, and they did a remarkably good job at putting together uh, new routes, informing the drivers of uh, the changes in the routes, preparing for the beginning of the school year, and put in numerous hours to make it work. Um, we had some conversations about how to um, get back to normal now that we have a supervisor in place to kind of make sure that the workload isn't as uh, impactful on our employees that they can go home in a reasonable hour uh, and as part of that discussion we felt th that we should fairly uh, compensate them with a stipend and so that's what this agreement is about yeah. any questions for about this item all right seeing none any motion to approve that john second Jennifer, all those in favor? Approved. And I want to thank uh, the staff for, for doing that, and I appreciate the work that they did over the summer in preparation for Dr. McQueen's uh, arrival. <coughs> thank you. We now move to committee reports. We'll start with uh, Marissa. Thank you, Mr. Vino. Uh, we have assistant transportation supervisor interviews scheduled for tomorrow, beginning at 1130. Our Director of Pupil Personnel Services Extended um, Job Posting closes on Friday, September 30th. The Human Resources <clears throat> Generalist Posting closes tomorrow on the 29th. Uh, we have a number of non-instructional positions that we're currently recruiting for. We have a vacant cook position at Columbia High School, um, one mechanic position, and several bus driver positions. Uh, we have some monitor needs across the um, high school level and also at the elementary level. Um, we have a couple of teaching assistant positions opened at Gough Middle School. And then um, we are concluding the building level interviews for school safety supervisor. References have been checked and we're working on scheduling final interviews. Uh, we are currently looking for um, additional substitute nurses. And lastly, we have selected um, candidates for the typist position um, in Bill Coyle's office, and then also the typist position um, in Dr. Wanda McQueen's office. So those will be uh, recommended appointments at the next uh, meeting in October. Great. Thank you. 
Um, I think there was a communication from Joanne to the family obligation. She was gonna, not going to make the. Yes. That. Is there anyone else who might be available? If not, I'm going to proceed. But it was uh, what time of the? Um, they begin at eleven thirty, um, and we should be done by one p.m. Okay. If you are available, if you look at your calendars, just get a hold of Marissa. Mm -hmm. um, so if you can, thank you. If not, we'll just step up to see. Sure. Okay. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Moving on to Linda. Thank you. You're I would welcome. just like to give the board an update on uh, our composting project as well as our share tables that have been discussed. Uh, our composting project, uh, we have clubs involved at both the middle school and high school. We have meetings set up this week and next week uh, with a representative coming in from Food, Food Scraps 360, which is the company <clears throat> providing us with the bins and the service. Um, she will meet with the advisors and students, and we're hoping for student participation in that. The composting bin, bins were delivered this week, and uh, we're just working on some logistics on getting them placed and, and in use. And um, the monitors are uh, helping to, um, to, to talk with students as they participate in the program, helping them uh, with what's compostable and what, you know, what will be you know, disposed of. The share tables are up and running at Goff, Green Meadow, and DPS, as well as the high school has been running a share table. So we are working on the other schools. Uh, there are support from the monitors there as well. They're making announcements at the beginning of lunch periods uh, as to what what types of food will go in the um, on the shared table. Um, also, they're they're thrilled. It just seems to be a general um, feeling that um, people are happy that good food is not being thrown out. So, you know, we are working. We're starting with packed packaged items first, and um, we have a separate bin which is called a donation bin for fresh fruit, and then the fresh fruit is taken back into the kitchens, washed again, and put out on the snack table. Thank you. Any questions for Linda? I want to thank Mrs. Skinnerski for the idea. No, thank you. <laughs> thank you for everybody who put it together. I'm really excited. Mm -hmm. I'm excited thank about it. Yeah, and for the background also, the composting project was pitched to the board last year, and uh, we had to be able to put that in place for uh, uh, the and team our new that food that service in. manager, Colleen Weiss, is the person who has really taken the lead. That's on great. This. That's great. That's great. Thank you, Colleen. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to come to the board and we'll talk about it. Now, moving on to Roy. Sure. Um, so, we had our first CCS uh, committee meeting on September 7th. Um, we welcomed a, a few new members, and then we had a brief discussion um, about making sure that our membership. Um, includes the two new positions that we had. So we've added two new content coordinators at the K-5, one at K-5 for special education, one at 6A for special education. And we did not have those positions um, included in CCS. So we had a discussion around that and making sure that those two positions are included in CCS moving forward. Um, we reviewed our meeting schedule for the year, and um, I made a proposal to have our meetings, every other meeting, move back to in-person. Um, so we're going to do that. So beginning in October, we'll be in-person, uh, rotating um, every other one from there. And then we just reviewed, we have three program reviews this year, athletics, uh, career and technical education, and language other than English. So those will be um, coming, hopefully, to the board in June. Um, <clears throat> We had a little bit of a discussion. We're going to have all of our summer curriculum writing projects. Uh, the project managers do a brief presentation um, to the CCS committee at our October meeting um, to summarize what those projects were um, and go over how they all went. And then I just gave a brief update on some professional development things, got some feedback on how our PD day, um, our PD days on opening day went. And then uh, we just talked a little bit about um, at the end of last year, last school year in June, um, there were some changes made to CTE hours for teachers. Um, so that has been a little bit of a discussion. And I just talked about making sure that I'll be working on making sure that we have a system moving forward so that, you know, the appropriate um, professional development is included for everyone's CTE hours. 
Okay. Any questions for what? Uh, yeah. Can you explain um, the comment about um, secret secret stories or that it that that development should come from your office awareness? Do you know what that is in regards to? Yeah, so secret stories is, is a is something that we're using at the elementary mm -hmm. uh, level now. So we're talking about um, you know seeing if we want to make sure we expand that, and then ultimately that would be brought to CCS. And um, if it gets endorsed through CCS, then it would you know ultimately come through my office instead of um, you know possible building funds and things like that. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thanks, Ray. And Mr. Simons. Uh, yes, we had our uh, budget review and revise uh, budget review and advisory committee meeting last evening. Uh, we had two um, significant items on the agenda. We had a presentation from Morgan Ruffman, who is from the Spinney Group, who is a, associated with a developmental a development company. Uh, they are uh, planning and proposing to the town of Skodak a residential development in the town of Skodak, but fully within our school district uh, called Van Hosen Station. Uh, they uh, estimate that there'll be 200 units over 50 acres uh, between uh, around 2000, 8, 2,000 square, fit, square foot family homes and 192 apartments, both one and two bedroom apartments. The anticipated time frame is to begin construction in 2024. The construction period will last three to five years. It will have wooded areas, walking trails, clubhouse features, pools, fire pits, dog park, tennis courts, uh, and green um, putting greens and storage units. The development is anticipated to attract young professionals with young families who want to remain in Skodak and have apartment living. Uh, there are there really aren't any uh, apartment complexes in Skodak, and the feeling was in their residential analysis that they previously did that people move out of Skodak who would prefer to live there, but the the affordability of uh, and access to apartments is not there. Um, the um, discussions that they're having are ongoing with the town. Um, the location is, and if you can help me with this, is in, in the vicinity of Amazon, but down. Right, it's, the, it's, it's on Route 9, where 9 and 20 split is where it's going to be. So we stressed that uh, as part of our enrollment projection process, uh, that the lines of communication should remain open with the town with the developer so that we can anticipate um, when uh, those apartments and homes start to be occupied, and whether we should anticipate more students. And that's really what we do at the BRAC committee. We exchange with the towns. We talk about residential and commercial development so that the district is aware of the planning that's occurring in the event that that planning would impact our, um, our enrollment. The projected impact on the tax uh, revenues for the district is approximately half a million dollars, is that right? Yes. Okay, which is an increase in terms of what we're receiving on the property right now, which is undeveloped. Correct. But they have no estimates at this point what the population is going to look like, if it's going to be single, you know, young married people, family, they, they, they don't have any. Yeah, that. we asked about that. They, they The type of uh, development that's occurring they anticipate would attract uh, single people, newly married people, uh, younger uh, uh, individuals, uh, we maybe young children, or planning to have young children. So um, that's the that's the demographic that they project. Who's the developer again? It's the Spinney Group. They have a similar development in Bethlehem, and I can't remember the name of it. Adams. Adams, yes. yes. Adams Station. Thank you. Emily was at the meeting, and as was Cheryl. So. Whereabouts roughly is the the district line? Is it down for the town garage on off nine past like server and Keller down? How far is our district's boundary for? I don't know. The answer. Yeah. So I, I'm not sure the answer, answer that. I, I think it's around there. We used to have the map up here. We just, <laughs> right. Let's <laughs> we'll put the map back up. Right. Yes, that's to the district. Yeah. Right on the line. Right. Yeah. It's right on the line. 
Yeah, when you said Route 9, I was thinking maybe yeah. I would have done Central. Yeah. I have, we had kids or friends that are past that, that one street past that Still is one. definitely ours. Yeah. Okay. okay, I was trying to get a sense for the area. Yeah, I'm not being under. Between the two warehouses, the one that... <laughs> <laughs> so Amazon is completely in our district. Okay. So we, we get the revenue from there. Yeah, then no, it's definitely, yeah, it's definitely in our yeah. district. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. You know, Skodak was looking to have more growth in their community, but they're inside. Yeah. We're getting the revenue. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Probably not an accident. <laughs> Uh, we also had a preview of the building condition survey, and this will be very important on the board agenda and on the community's uh, radar for the next uh, school year. Uh, the architectural portion of the building condition survey is complete. The uh, site work portion is complete. The mechanical portion is not complete as of yet. On the state uh, requirement, we are scheduled to have the building condition survey completed by December 31st of this year. So on the state cycle, when we're required to do it, it had been in one point on a five-year schedule because of the state education department reviewers being so overwhelmed and understaffed and because of COVID, they, they took priority to the districts that hadn't done a lot of work in a while and were in the worst shape as far as their facilities kept them on the five-year schedule, but districts like ours that have been doing ongoing work as part of our long-range plan are now on a seven-year schedule. So uh, we have a little more time. Uh, Steve Wickman, our architect, worked with Paul Bickle to provide a slideshow, and he reviewed some prioritized items. Uh, one of the things that we noted was that before we start discussing new items. There were items that were category three on our previous building condition survey that we weren't able to include with the overall cost. So part of our review will be to look at those. Uh, first, health and safety items are prioritized by the state and have to be prioritized by the district. Uh, but we also spoke about our needs that we've identified and that we want those needs included in the building condition survey and steve emphasized if it isn't in the building condition survey the state isn't going to provide building aid and necessarily approve the project so upgrades to the playgrounds replacement to the playgrounds was discussed we showed pictures of the playgrounds and we talked about the quest star review architect review that had been done as well uh, upgrading the hvac systems including air conditioning in the elementary schools uh, and pavement, there's still a lot of pavement work that needs to be done in the district. Uh, we showed a picture of what this parking lot outside looked like uh, before and after. Uh, the new drainage that we're putting in uh, along with the paving and the curbing. And there's more work to be done on this. But we basically um, exchanged what information we had regarding the building condition survey. The other thing we're going to put in the building condition survey that we haven't thought about is another access road to the high school. We still have a lot of conversations that we have to have with uh, uh, property owners uh, uh, over on Maddox Road, off of Maddox Road, but uh, we've identified that as an area to go into the building condition survey. Because if you don't identify it as an issue, once you get to the point of planning and, and uh, project implementation, the state may not approve it. So we're, we're, there's more work to be done on it. Uh, I invite anybody who is interested in the potential for the next capital project to attend our next BRAC meeting, which is October 17th, 7 yeah. o'clock. And um, the meeting was very well attended by uh, BRAC members, our board, and uh, our athletic director, uh, members of the community, John Keller, uh, and uh, our uh, construction manager from St. Ruben, Tom Siriani, and then myself, Wayne Pratt, chaired the meeting. It was a good meeting. I'll ask Emily and uh, and Cheryl, if they have any uh, comments on the meeting. Let's talk a lot about the athletic fields, too, yeah. the work that yes. needs to be done. Yes. Uh, is that the middle school? What, yeah, the, the middle school. Yeah, we showed a picture of the, of the, of the drainage issues at yeah. the middle school. Yeah. We, I forgot that. I'm glad you mentioned that. We showed some slides from the athletic uh, study that was done by March Associates in 2018 and identified some of the issues at the middle school. 
regarding uh, fields that can't be used uh, because of the drainage. We talked about the drainage on the fields by the high school, by the baseball field. And some work had been done, but further improvements were needed. We talked about potential for handicapped accessibility to the playgrounds and to some of the fields. And that we brought that study back out, but that study needs to be updated with current prices. One thing I will warn you about, <coughs> you probably know this intuitively, that uh, when we put a number on an item in the building condition survey in years past, our architect would inflate that number by about 6% to allow for a cost escalation. He's going to use 30% because of what's happening in the market right now. Um, that that to project those costs out so that when we do decide if we're going to do that work as long as that we come under budget we've been very successful in this current project although it has been challenging to get it done during the time frame that we wanted to get it done our costs have come in well under the estimates originally and we've been able to do extra work we want to put ourselves in a good position for the next time we also want to look at our debt Mm -hmm. And when we're retiring, our, uh, and we'll have our fiscal capital capital markets capital markets do a study for the board on, on the timing of this, and when we can retire debt uh, from the previous capital projects and and try to you know bring on a new project without um, too much impact on the local tax dollar, the local tax levy. So um, you know when we start talking about the athletic fields, I'd like to make sure that we put the middle school a little bit higher. On the priority, we, we put a lot in the high school, and I appreciate that. But the middle school modified teams really don't have a lot of. It place. was the forefront of our presentation on the Perfect. athletic facilities. It was the thing that we emphasized that we have unusable fields, and we have a situation where um, if it rains and it's wet, yeah. kids can't really practice out there. We're we're competing for the same turf field. Uh, we don't have the ability to. And you could really develop, and we I think we also had in the original design. Uh, uh, a field with a track. Mm -hmm. now, whether or not we decide to do that, that's a board decision, but it's it's on our radar and it's at the top. Yeah, it, so. and just the regular gym classes are limited when right. it's raining, it's it's all of it. So. Is, is the track up behind Janae part of this discussion too? Yes. Great. Was there conversations about instructional spaces? Uh, we, the, we did not get to that point. Um, one of the things I have talked with Allison Hozier about, we'll do what we did last time. When we get to that point, we'll involve some of the teachers and the principals and the educators in those discussions. So this would be the appropriate time to insert storage for the music department yes. and the instructional <laughs> space. Um, we, we listen. See that? I paid attention. <laughs> one thing that is a big factor, and I said this last evening, is what we have a building aid reimbursement ratio as a district, which is somewhere between 65% and 70%. Correct, Linda? We don't know the exact. 68. Last time it was 72. Yeah. It's based on enrollment. It's based on other wealth factors. Mm -hmm. You want to design your project in such a way that you maximize the number, the amount of building aid that you receive. Certain types of projects are not eligible for building aid. So we use an example. If you wanted to put an extra gym back on the high school, you're not going to get any aid on that because the enrollment will, will, the state will say, yes, we understand you want to expand your program. Yes, we want to understand, we understand you want to improve your program by having more space. But based on the 1,200 students you have in the high school, your gym space is sufficient by our rules. Uh, if you have extra room around the district, they don't care about, honestly, they don't care that the community is upset that you might have to change attendance zones. It's not a factor that they consider. They say, well, you've got extra classrooms. We use a number 27. Your class sizes might be 24, 23 or fewer. It doesn't matter to us. We show in our analysis, you could move kids around. So therefore, we won't support an addition on, for example, Bell Top or, or, or school. So these are the kinds of things that we'll be talking about. They won't support it as far as eight. 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 right? But if we as a board decide that we want to bring on some of these you can do so at local cost. Yeah. Yes. So the, all of that kind of information will be when the building condition survey is done, discussed at BRAC, 
that ultimately we will be bringing through BRAC recommendations to the board for a future capital project. And honestly, if we could get the work done, um, I would like to come out in the spring at budget time with another vote for a capital project to be determined by the board. The scope would be determined by the board, what we do. But I think we're finishing up this project. We're learning a lot about other things that need to be done as we've gotten into this work. Uh, the prices are not going to go down. They're only going to go up. So uh, it's a good time maybe to bring another capital project forward to the community. You know, most of our recent capital projects and, and stuff have been, you know, uh, replacing old, you know, redesigned. We have not significantly added to to our buildings in quite some time. That's correct. So th the more and more we put it off, the more and more the prices are going to go up. So I think, you know, we should really take a hard look at it, this one, to say, okay, where do we need more space? And get it now because you know in five years prices are going to be more. So we got to you know at some point say we're going to do it, right? You know, and find some of those buildings, the middle school, belt top, that need some space, and 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 say okay, let's let's figure out how we can do it. We may have to eat a little bit more of that cost. Right. We do have a reserve. We're starting, right? Yes. We talked so, about that last night. Too. Right. So we can start. You know. Uh, having some of that funding, uh, but at some point in time, we have to consider addition, additional space, not just, you know, redesign and, and, you know, make old look new. In some, there are some ways, you're correct, Mark, there are some ways to look at a building differently and perhaps create more space by not even adding an extra, put extra to the footprint. So that's one thing that our architects can do is say, for example, Scott's concerned with repurposing. So maybe you'll look at how it was designed back when the building was originally built or was renovated. Looking at it differently now, how might you be able to rework the existing space? And then the next step would be, do we actually need to expand the footprint of classrooms on, for example? And there's ways that our architect and construction managers can work with us to uh, maximize the the aid, uh, but also expand the space. So it's not a it's not a hard and fast rule that the state won't aid uh, additions, so to speak. It depends on how you go about the additions. So I mean, this is something that we really need to need to keep talking about. Yeah. And we just, like I said, we just need to start really looking at it because, like you said, every year we put it off. To the next one to the next one i mean prices aren't going to keep going up so you know let's just look at it now get the pricing and, and you know tackle some stuff thank you just a, just one quick comment i agree with michelle and what what she said about the middle school a lot of the projects we've been done around the district we've had done some stuff to the middle school but the the grounds and the 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 exterior of it is not a very inviting when you look at it for the kids and i think that if we can find a way to prioritize their recreation and their because we're talking about integrating the the k through 12 athletic programs and i'm sure we're going to hear about that there's a, it almost stops at the middle school because of there's very limited so i think you know to mark's point michelle's point and to your point that the drainage i mean other than having a fishing club out there when it rains real hard there's just really no it's just giant wasted space so i think part of our overview of the of the district and its facilities is how can we maximize the use that benefits the students and and the the prices on these projects you know despite what they tell you every night is not going to go down for quite some time so i i i, I would support that comprehensive review the, the, one of the great things about the location of the middle school is the uh, you've got the Seren School Fields, which we've done. Yeah. You've got the Little League Fields. You've got the girls' softball complex. With the right design behind golf, you can kind of tie that in right. uh, with pathways and uh, ways to walk between right. uh, the properties okay. safely. Yeah. It, it adds to the community benefit, too, because you can host tournaments, certain tournaments, bringing people from the outside, shop in your stores, 
uh, go to your restaurants. It has a spillover effect into the community benefit as well. And I don't think it would be very hard to not only develop those fields, but tie in the way to connect to uh, some of the some of the complexes that are not really operated by the district. And one other thing, if they could get considered, is you know the 1970s sign at the entrance to Columbia High School that served us very well <laughs> and for many years, and you know going out and having to change the letters and stuff. You know, can we? Look. We actually have that in the current project, <laughs> I think, still. So, right? We've talked about it a number of times. I, we, you know, we hold, we're holding some money, but we haven't made a determination as to the sign selection. Talk to Mr. Harkin about it. Um, I have sent Mel Valley to that sign. Huh? I have we would Mel repurpose that, that sign <laughs> uh, for nostalgia. So yeah. We're going to put it in the middle school. I'll play again. <laughs> The next board picture. So we we'll talk about that. Do you have anything we to have ask? talked about that, and we're just getting down to the end of the project now, and and reviewing the amount of money that we have left. One of the main deciding factors is we just opened bids for the fire alarm system at the high school, which has to be done. So now we'll be able to take a look at what are we going to have left over, um, in order to address some of these other items that that we want. And then I would like to remind the board too that another large item that will be in the building condition survey is um, preparing for the infrastructure for the electric buses mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we're going to be required to purchase as well. Don't That's all I'll say about that. Don't 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 that one. <laughs> I have yeah. some good news that on that front, not to steer too far from the agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, NISMAC, which is the New York State Energy I forget the formal name, but it's a state agency that uh, oversees uh, energy. Is going to work with various advocacy groups, including the superintendents, school boards, to uh, help uh, troubleshoot and identify issues regarding the timeline, implementing the timeline to convert to zero emission buses. They, the theory is that they will be able to be helpful in interceding the potential changes to the timeline in the law, uh, and. Uh, the legislative committee of NISCUS, which I'm on, is meeting with them on, in December. So there's some recognition at the state level that this is a tough, almost impossible timeline to meet, 2027, to be able to no longer purchase. Yeah. Right. We're uh, supposed to, I think, 2025, we're supposed to start purchasing zero emission buses and be fully zero emission by 2035. I think so. Um, it's we, a tight. Jen and I were recently at um, a board uh, training, and and we had heard that a local district had purchased two already, mm -hmm. and they used and they were able to get um, some funding for that. So perhaps we should. I know it's a sore subject, but perhaps maybe being proactive would be better. Um, and if that is funding has a you know end date or you know an amount that will dry up, perhaps looking into it sooner rather than later would be more beneficial. Yeah, there, there is a uh, grant funding that's available. I was trying to remember what district. Bethlehem. Yeah. yeah, we have talked about alternative fuel buses before. We've kind of going down that path a couple years. So more to come. I would like to see if the board is OK that we move kind of some of this building condition conversations to a more of a regular standing item. Sure. Almost like an old business kind of repeat item. Okay. That's a standing item because That'd be great. I do think it's an important topic, and if we're looking to do something for, to present in the spring, that's a pretty aggressive timeline for what could amount to be a very large yes. project. So there had to be some these kinds of discussions regularly. Yeah, there's something yeah. going on. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Moving on our agenda, uh, table motions. We don't have any old business board members. Anything? Yes, Mark. So I know Jeff as well as myself have kind of been really pushing the county yeah. on the on the cameras for the uh, the buses. I know you've emailed them. Yep. I've emailed them. <laughs> I've received no response. No. Not me. No. So um, you know, can we maybe as a district draft up a letter and and send it out and you know ask what this. Uh, what, you know what the status is. Sure. Um, the last that I had heard is what it was with the the county attorney's office waiting for their sign off. Interesting. 
uh, the bus company is is biting at the or the company that wants to install the cameras, you know, is biting at the bit to to get into to Runcer County here because there's I think we're up to maybe five school districts already mm -hmm. in the county that that are interested in in have signed on to to do this. So you know maybe our emails are not going to the right people. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know it's a good idea. You know, so maybe kinda, something from Jeff, myself, and you? Yeah, and just a, a letter to, to the county exec saying, hey, you know, this is important. We're willing to you know, help move it along. You know, can we kind of get an update as to you know, where we it's, it's where a good idea. stand on it? Everything that we were supposed to do, we've done. We've done. Many months ago. Months and months and months <laughs> and months ago. Yeah, didn't so, the county have something we started to uh, South exactly. County has has the program. Well, yeah. One of them just implemented it at the beginning of this school year, somewhere over in Albany County. Yeah. Well, if that doesn't get a response, maybe the five school districts go together and write a letter. Super, yeah. Yeah. Super yeah. So um, it'll be it's been a while. The okay. last New York City school board's convention is moving you know, yes. forward. So yeah. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. All right. Any, anything else? So moving on to our consent agenda, items A through H. Any comments or questions on the consent agenda? No. Seeing none, I have a motion to approve that. Mark, I need a second. Jennifer, all those in favor? Approved. We do not have any addendums. Any new business board members? Anything? Uh, so there was a communication about the Saturday workshop in, on November 5th and participation there so um just want to put that out there is something that with uh bill daggett from the group you saw that if they're interested and in, we're going to try to put together a team i think internally yes. and probably a couple of board members i'll probably attend um mark i don't know if you're going to attend or if someone else wants to attend and be part of that project it's a saturday 11 5 from 9 to 12. Okay. so if you're interested and available let us know we'll have yeah, a team put together yeah, yeah, we have some time. RSVP to Questar was. Uh, either you can respond directly to Questar or Stephanie can handle the reservations for you. Yeah. Very good. Uh, public forum. Next item. Um, any other new business, by the way? Anything else? No? Okay. Um, second public forum. Anybody from the public want to speak? No. We'll go to the board forum. We'll start on my left with Cheryl. Nothing. All set. All set. I apologize, I wasn't at last board meeting, but I do want to say thank you to Bill Coyle for stepping up and, and helping us uh, on behalf of the board. We really appreciate it. Short notice, and we really appreciate you coming back again and helping with us. So uh, thank you. Bill, the leaves are turning up north. <laughs> just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm good. Man. Thanks. Thank you, John. Jennifer. Okay. Kathleen. Um, I just want to say thank you to Mr. Halliday. Um, my kids were very involved in music all the way through, and it is amazing to see the strides that have been made since they left. It wasn't that long ago. Um, but it's it's amazing what the our music department does. I still go back for the concerts and stuff because it is very enjoyable. Thank you. Thanks for Kathleen. Emily? Right. I don't have anything. One time. Just one one yes. announcement just came uh, to our attention this afternoon. It's a very good announcement. Uh, Mark Adam, everybody knows, is our public uh, communication specialist. Our district has received three awards uh, from the New York State School Public Relations Association. Uh, we've earned an Excellence in Writing Award for our story that Mark published on our website regarding our new clay target team. We won an award for Excellence in Writing, Honor, Board of Honor, Excellence in Writing for elementary students show growth in reading and math on mid-year assessments. And we won an award of merit for our story on new mental health satellite clinic opens up at Columbia and Goff. Mark does a terrific job. Uh, he will be rolling out an announcement of this to the community. I uh, just want to thank Mark for all of his work and those people that contribute. So with, with that, will there be like awards we can recognize Mark at? 
I, I would like to have Mark come to a meeting and maybe yeah, we can absolutely. appreciate it. Absolutely. Publicly. And he can take pictures. <laughs> we'll flip the roll. You can do a selfie. Get the iPhones out. Okay. All right. With that, uh, that concludes our regular business. We do have need for executive session for personal contractual and personnel matters. Um, so I need a motion to go into executive session. Uh, Mark, second, John. All those in favor? All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Appreciate your attendance.